The tech job market in 2026 is broken. Layoffs. 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 YouTube and Meta have all announced new rounds of layoffs. Entry-level hiring at the top 15 tech companies has fallen by more than 50% since 2019. More than 126,000 tech workers were laid off in 2025 alone. But despite all of that, lots of tech companies are still increasing hiring, especially for AI, cloud, and product roles, and demand for tech talent hasn't disappeared. So what is the true reality of the tech job market? Hi, friends. I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer who previously worked at Google and internet other big tech companies like Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft. I've watched colleagues get laid off, help friends navigate the chaotic job market, and I've been through the hiring process myself on both sides of the table. So today, I'm going to talk about the reality of what's happening right now in the tech job market, and more importantly, what's actually working for people who are landing jobs. We'll cover the real data behind what's happening, who's getting hit hardest, and the specific strategies that are working for people who are getting jobs and adapting to this new landscape. So let's get into it. Let's start with the data on the current status of the tech market going into 2026. Tech job postings are down 36% compared to pre-pandemic levels. And here's the thing, they've been pretty stable at that low level since mid-2025. There's no sign of a boom coming back anytime soon. We've entered into what experts are calling a low hire, low fire environment. Companies aren't doing as many mass layoffs like 2022 and 2023, but they're also not opening up many new roles. More than 126,000 tech workers were laid off in 2025 alone. And layoffs are probably not stopping in 2026. Just in the past few months, we've seen massive cuts at Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and dozens of smaller companies. For example, Synopsys announced plans to cut about 2,000 employees. Intel is letting go of hundreds. Even AI companies aren't immune. Scale AI laid off 14% of its workforce just weeks after landing a massive deal with Meta. But a confusing part of this entire equation is that companies are simultaneously laying off while saying they can't find enough skilled workers. Research predicts that the IT skills shortage will cost organizations $5.5 billion. Robert Half reported that 87% of tech leaders currently face challenges finding skilled workers. So what's going on? How can there be layoffs and a skills shortage at the same time? The market isn't dying, it's splitting in two. Generalist roles are disappearing while specialized positions are exploding. Tech job postings requiring AI skills nearly doubled from about 5% in 2024 to over 9% in 2025. Meanwhile, Overall, program employment dropped 27% between 2023 and 2025. The Bureau of Labor Statistics is projecting that tech jobs will grow from 6 million in 2025 to over 7 million by 2035. For example, data scientists are projected to grow by over 400%, cybersecurity analysts by over 360%, and software engineers by nearly 300%. But here's the catch. Those aren't the same jobs that existed five years ago. The roles that are growing required specialized expertise, not general programming skills. So when you hear tech is dead, that's wrong. And when you hear tech is booming, that's also wrong. The truth is somewhat in between. Some corners of tech are absolutely thriving while others are getting gutted. Okay, so let's rewind a bit. How did we get here. There are three forces that converge to make this happen. First, pandemic overhiring. Remember 2021? Social media was flooded with day in the life videos of tech workers showing off office perks, while news articles advertised massive salaries. Computer science enrollment at many unis literally doubled. Everyone and their mother decided to become a software engineer, and companies hired like crazy to match. Amazon and Meta both doubled their headcount during the pandemic boom. They hired more engineers in two years than they had in the previous five combined. Google Google's engineering headcount grew by 16%. The money was cheap, growth seemed infinite, and everyone was building for a digital first world that they thought was permanent. Then reality hit. Consumer habits shifted back to normal. Interest rates went up. Venture capital dried up. Companies realized that they could maintain productivity with smaller, more experienced teams. And that massive hiring spree turned into an equally massive correction. And all those students who enrolled in computer science during the hype, they're graduating around now in 2025 and 2026 into the worst entry level market in decades. Second, AI changed the economics of hiring. GitHub reports that 46% of code on their platform is now AI generated. Google says that 25% of their new code comes from AI. The interesting thing is that AI isn't necessarily making engineers faster. A recent study found that experienced developers using AI tools like Cursor and Claude were actually 19% slower at completing tasks, but yet they were convinced they were faster. They predicted AI would make them 24% more productive, and even after seeing their slower results, they still believed it had sped them up. It's what I call the productivity 
productivity placebo. The real impact isn't on actual absolute levels of productivity, it's on how companies think about hiring. Companies now expect every engineer to leverage AI effectively. The grunt work that used to train junior developers, writing boilerplate, fixing simple bugs, doing code reviews on straightforward PRs, those tasks are increasingly automated. So companies think they can skip the juniors entirely and hire experienced engineers who can hit the ground running. After all, why invest in training someone for six to 12 months when you can hire someone who's productive on day one? Third, global talent competition. Large companies got comfortable with remote hiring during the pandemic. They learned that work can be done online with distributed teams. So why pay a senior engineer in the US 150K when you can hire someone with similar skills in Argentina for 60K or India for 40K? The math is simple for these companies watching their bottom line. This opened doors for global talent, but also trimmed opportunities for local hires in the US, especially at the entry level where the value proposition is hardest to justify. Put these three forces together, oversupply of new grads, AI reshaping job responsibilities, and global competition, and you get the market we have today. Now let's talk about who's really feeling the pain, and unfortunately, it's new grads and entry-level candidates. According to Federal Reserve data, computer science graduates face 6.1% unemployment. For context, philosophy majors have a 3.2% unemployment. Art history graduates, just 3%. Even journalism majors are doing better at 4.4%. The learn to code promise has completely flipped. Entry-level positions have seen a staggering 73% decrease in hiring rates in the past year, compared to just a 7% decrease across all job levels overall. Junior roles in engineering, marketing, and people ops are getting hit even harder than that average. And only 7% of new hires at big tech companies in 2024 were recent grads. Back in 2022, it was 25%. That is not a small shift. That's the entry pathway into tech shrinking by more than two thirds in just two years. Signal Fire found that while hiring for mid and senior level roles rebounded a bit in 2024 after the 2023 layoffs, it continued to decline at the entry level. Companies learned that they could maintain productivity with experienced teams and just skip the training investment entirely. But as one hiring expert put it, if you don't hire and nurture young talent now, what will your mid-level and leadership positions look like in five years? We're heading towards some very difficult and expensive recruitment to fill that gap. But that's a future problem and companies are focused on the bottom line right now. But I promise this isn't just doom and gloom. Let's talk about what's actually working for people who are landing jobs right now. First, specialize, don't generalize. The market is punishing generalists and rewarding specialists. AI skills now command a 56% wage premium over workers without AI expertise. That's up from just 25% the year before. Python, AWS, CICD, and AI ranked as the top tech skills with the largest year-over-year -year increase in job listings. Next, pick a lane. Whether it's AI engineering, cloud architecture, cybersecurity, data engineering, or ML ops, go deep rather than wide. The people getting hired have a clear speciality, not just a vague full stack label. Second, build proof, not just credentials. Employers aren't impressed by degrees alone anymore. The number of HR leaders using skills first hiring has tripled in just two years. 18% are now prioritizing certificates and demonstrated skills over traditional degrees for roles in software engineering and data science. So build projects that solve real problems. Put them on GitHub with clear documentation and write about what you learned. You can contribute to open source as well. The people getting hired Hard aren't just applying, they're showing evidence of what they can do. Your portfolio doubles as a resume. Next, target the right companies. A lot of people are focused on FANG, but that's where competition is the most brutal. Mid-sized companies, growing startups, and non-tech industries that need tech talent are often overlooked. For example, healthcare, fintech, enterprise software, and even banks are actively hiring software engineers and AI specialists. Sometimes the best opportunities are where everyone else isn't looking. Fourth, leverage your network relentlessly. One in four people say personal connections play the biggest role in securing their job. Referrals aren't just nice to have, they're essential when your resume isn't competing against hundreds of others. Go to meetups, contribute to open source, engage meaningfully on LinkedIn, and build relationships before you need them. And finally, learn to work with AI, not against AI. Companies expect engineers to use AI tools effectively, but more importantly, they want people who can do what AI can't. They want people who can make judgment calls, navigate ambiguity, communicate with stakeholders, and understand business context. The engineer who thrive will be those who use AI to amplify their capabilities, not those who try to compete with it. So in conclusion, the tech job market in 2026 isn't actually dead. It's transforming. Yes, the bar is higher than it's ever been, but new opportunities are emerging for people who can adapt. The question isn't whether tech careers are worth pursuing. They absolutely are. The data shows massive growth in specialized roles. The question is whether you're willing or able to evolve with the market. If this video helped you understand what's really happening with the tech market in 2026, 
feel free to hit that like button, hype this video, and subscribe for more tech career content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.